Hello and welcome to the Global Reviews Q1 UK Financial Services webinar. I am Rebecca Jennings. I'm a Principal Client Advisor here at Global Reviews. And it's my role for the next half an hour or so to talk you through the latest results of the research we've conducted in the first half of this year, 2015, over the multitude of financial services markets we cover in the UK. Very quickly, I'm just going to touch on who Global Reviews are, for those of you who may or may not uh, know us. I'm going to talk quickly about the research methodology that we've used in the uh, research uh, we've conducted this year. And then we're going to look in uh, some depth at the results and some of the insights and opportunities that comes out of that research. So very quickly, for those of you who may or may not be aware of Global Reviews as a company, we have been uh, working within digital consumer ana analytics and competitor intelligence research for some 15 years now across the UK, Ireland, Europe, as well as Australia and New Zealand. Um, we work with many of the top brands across uh, not only just financial services, but we also operate within uh, telecoms, energy, other branches of insurance, such as car uh, insurance, home insurance, travel insurance, um, health, uh, retail. So many consideration uh, markets, markets in which consumers think about a, a, a purchase before they, uh, they make a decision. So um, as I say, a number of financial services markets in the UK, so brands such as Nationwide, Tesco's, um, Lloyd's, uh, obviously brands outside of uh, the UK as well, such as Westpac, Commonwealth Bank, um, ANZ, uh, Bank of Ireland. So a lot of big brands uh, are already buying into to what we do. And in terms of what it is we do, um, what I'm going to talk to you specifically about this morning um, is really what well, I'm going to talk about two particular pieces of research that cover the discover, consider and act phases of the consumer engagement when they are researching and purchasing a product. So as a consumer comes to a market thinking they want to say take out a mortgage or a loan or renegotiate uh, a mortgage, they're essentially in the discover phase. What are there, is there out there for them in the market for them? What brands uh, are there? What are those brands offering? How do you as a brand attract those prospective customers to your site and to your um, offering? So it's a discover phase. There's a consider phase in which consumers have found brands in markets and they're looking at what they offer, uh, trying to figure out whether those brands actually offer them something that matches their specific needs. And then there's, of course, there's the act phase, which is when they actually go ahead and apply for or purchase that product or service. And then obviously there is the relate phase through the, the, the customer relationship. Uh, we're not going to really touch on that part of the, the journey today. We're going to talk more about the products or the research that we do that cover the discover, consider, and act phases. Those are two particular types of product. There is a digital marketing effectiveness study and the digital sales effectiveness study. The digital marketing effectiveness study starts at the beginning of this cycle to through the discover phase and talks to consumers and puts them through a blank screen process to understand how they do their online research when they are in a position to look for a new product. And in this particular case, they say it's a financial services related product. So what kind of research do they do online? What do they search for? How long does it take? Which brands would they visit? Which brands would they uh, spend more time on? And when, who would they uh, particularly pick? So through the discover and consider phases. The digital sales effectiveness study, which we're also going to touch on, actually looks at the experience they have on brand websites when they get further down that uh, consider process. So when they actually go to a brand's website, does the brand help them engage uh, with them? Does it help them match a product and service? Does it persuade them that they should purchase from this particular brand? It's a benchmark across uh, the brand, the key brands in an industry, and how they meet consumers' needs across the consider and act phases. So those two products together, as you can see, very effectively cover the discover, consider, and act phases of a consumer's consideration um, and uh, research process. 
I mentioned quickly about the DME being a blank screen study. Uh, there are a number of inputs into each of these pieces of research. The DME is, as I say, a blank screen study in people's homes. They use their own technology and they are asked to go off and do research around finding a, a new product in a specific market. So it be a mortgage or it could be a loan, it could be a credit card. They're all people in the market to do this kind of research uh, anyway. They are people who are in the market to swap or purchase uh, this product in the next uh, three months anyway. So they're kind of in, in market consumers. And we can track everything they do through a little applet that's downloaded onto their browser so I can see how long it takes them to do the research, where they go, which topics uh, they search for. Uh, where they go from from search, which brands they shortlist, which brands they finally produce. And then we also ask them, obviously, a number of questions about that process. Why did they do what they did? How did they make the decisions that they made? Then, of course, we have the DSE, the Digital Sales Effectiveness. Now, that is uh, also done uh, with consumers. It's a mixture of getting consumers, again, to do some tasks on specific websites. So they are directed to, say, the Tesco Bank site or the Nationwide site or the HSBC site and said, please go and do a number of very specific tasks on this site. So find, for example, a list of mortgages that are available, find a specific mortgage that meets specific needs, go through the application process as far as they can. Uh, again, they're also asked a number of attitudinal questions about that process, what worked, what didn't, uh, why did they feel it find something hard, what were the key problems that they had. They're also asked an audit of the features and functions of the website. The difference with the DSE over the DME is there's also a best practice audit that is conducted by Global Review's internal experts around 350 individual yes-no questions uh, looking at the features and functions and capabilities of the website. And the DSE results are actually a combination of what the consumers do and they say and they feel about the process with that expert audit. So that becomes a competitive benchmark of each particular site in a market compared to its competitors. And uh, each day the process is scored uh, to, to show us how successful that site was at actually helping consumers achieve their goals. The overall score of the, the DSE, as I say, is a percentage. Uh, we would normally say a site would need to score at least around 55% to be meeting consumers' needs. Uh, anything less than that, and there are obviously some, some sort of big problems in the process. Between about 55 and 65 is doing OK. Above 65, it's, uh, it's ticking a lot of boxes. Obviously, there's still room for improvement, but uh, 65 would, would indicate that uh, it, was, it was meeting uh, most of the key computer need, uh, consumer needs across the, the process. So what we're going to do this morning is look at uh, a couple of uh, these, these research that's been taking place in the UK for the last few months in a variety of UK financial services markets, because there's a lot of research we do uh, in the UK on an ongoing basis. This is just uh, to give you a, an idea of the markets in which we work in, and also to show you some of the top line results from those markets from the latest digital sales effectiveness. That's that benchmark I was just discussing, where we ask consumers to do a number of tasks and combine it with the best practice audit. These are the key financial services markets we've been operating in the last few months. Uh, obviously, also there is a number of insurance markets, which we're not going to, to look at this morning. Uh, but today, we're going to touch on current accounts, personal loans, mortgages, and credit cards. We've been running both the DME and the DSE across all of these markets in this uh, period of time. So there's a tremendous amount of research. All we're going to be able to do in the next half hour or so is just touch on some of the key insights that uh, we see coming out of those markets. But obviously, there's an awful lot of other data sitting behind this. Uh, in terms of clients, uh, clients get access within our online portal to this data. Um, so they have it uh, at their fingertips on an ongoing basis. So as I say, these are the key markets we have been uh, researching in UK financial services, UK and Irish financial services over the last uh, few months. And you can see a couple of things. I firstly mentioned sort of a score of 65 and above being pretty good. And uh, we were expecting or hoping that uh, sites would reach about 55% was really a minimum to, to meet consumers' goals. 
as you can see, most of the sites in the studies over the last few months have not certainly uh, reached the 65. In fact, we don't have anybody who gets a score that high. So that's not unusual. Most of the markets we review, we don't get uh, particularly high scores. Um, we've got Lloyd's uh, on 62 is actually the highest for our current account, DSE. But also, what's uh, also interesting here is that so many brands not even reaching that 55% in a lot of markets. Uh, current accounts, on average, uh, pretty much just about hitting that. But actually, if you look at the other brands, other markets, uh, we've got a lot of markets in which people aren't even and reaching that sort of basic level, particularly loans, uh, a poor provider, a provision for loans, mortgages, uh, but even credit cards. Some of the lower scores in loans and mortgages is because in some cases you can't apply for these products online yet, so that reduces the brand score. For credit cards, you pretty much always can, and you're still getting really low scores there. So it's not just about the functionality, the, the pure functionality not being there. It's about a lot of the other support and help that consumers would really need um, not, not being there. So really, that's just to set the scene to show you that we have a market in which the majority, vast majority of brands are not meeting the basic consumer requirements in terms of helping them through this consider phase, comparing products, and then getting them through the act phase of the product research journey. So poor journeys being uh, supplied at the moment. So what we're going to do now is look at a little bit more in-depth uh, results from both the DME and the DSC and how they work together to show us what some of the key pains are that consumers are suffering as they go through these journeys. At the top level, uh, people doing in terms of research and how long is it taking them. So how long do you have to really capture their attention? Obviously that's different depending on what kind of brand, what kind of product it is. Uh, on average for current accounts, credit cards, uh, consumers are spending between three and four hours, uh, less than a week, maybe a working week, uh, considering four or five brands in that. Obviously with mortgages that's more of a considered process, maybe 10 hours over two weeks. Uh, a little bit longer perhaps in some cases, and again, considering four or five brands. So if you're offering a current account or a credit card, you've actually got a very short window of time uh, for people making those decisions and you'll get into their consideration set. It's got a little longer when you're coming to, to mortgages, but still it's about how do you reach consumers' consideration set and keep yourself top of mind while they're doing that research. When we go through the DME, as I say from the beginning, it's a blank screen study. We ask people to go on off and, and do some research. But we also ask them at the beginning, do you come to this research with an existing preference? Most of us do. Most of us have pushed and say, okay, I'd probably go with the, this particular provider or this one. We have one that's top of mind when we're thinking about getting a new credit card or a new mortgage. So, for example, here we have uh, the initial preferences for each of these key brands uh, across the mortgage, current accounts, cards, and loans. A little bit complicated, this one, because there's a lot of, uh, lot of color going on here. But essentially, what we've got is the blue is the percentage of a market who would originally prefer that provider for this particular product. So in the case of mortgages, around 20% of consumers started the process saying, OK, if you pushed, and I had to make a choice now before I did any research, I'd probably go with Nationwide for my next mortgage. Around 8% say Santander, around 8% say Halifax, for example. Uh, in the Irish market, around 15% say AIB, uh, around 11% say Bank of Ireland, for example. The red is the percentage of the market who would choose that brand for a current account, then green for cards, and obviously purple for loans. We've got Nationwide at the top, uh, because generally speaking, they do pretty well in all of these markets. Uh, we've actually got Santander, for example, being uh, the largest percentage choice for credit cards, um, but doing pretty well across the other markets as well. So these are the looking at in initial preferences. Obviously, what this means, uh, there's a number of things going on here. We've obviously got some brands who do well across the board, some brands who have established a presence in all of these key financial services markets. Uh, what they've actually got to do now, that is, is, is to work hard to retain that preference, because this is before research. This is at the beginning of the process. And we'll see in later that actually a fair few people then change their minds when they go through the research process for various reasons. 
So it's good that we've got some brands here uh, coming into the market with an existing user base that's feeling positive about the, the experience they've had or positive about the brand, but actually then it presents a challenge. Can you hold on to those consumers? But also can you help change consumers' minds? Because just if you went with this percentage of the market, obviously it's not a, a particularly sustainable business. You need to swap other people's minds as well and how do they actually do that. Um, most of the cases at this point, consumers choose this brand because they've got current uh, existing experience with them. And that is what we go on as a consumer at the beginning. We choose our next brand because we've got good experience with them. But we'll see later again how research online and comparison and aggregators helps to change people's minds. So yes, brands have got to use strategies to, to try and change people's minds. So what do consumers actually do when they go out and do this research? Most start uh, with search. 94% uh, of our consumers at some point in their journey uh, went to a search engine, most of them go to Google, it's not completely 100% uh, or, or Google, there's a bit of Bing in there, uh, a bit of Yahoo, but it's pr primarily Google. So 94% at some point in their journey are using search. Only 50% actually visited the brand they originally prefer. So what's happening here? So for example, we've got mortgages, 70% go on with an initial preference, primarily it's because they're existing customers. They then go on and do a bit of research, but actually only just over half of them who've had initial preference go to their preferred brand's website. So actually something happens in the process to say either um, I've been distracted by another website, it looks more interesting. It could be that they believe they know so much about that brand already they don't need to. That that's sometimes fact, factors into here. But actually a lot of the time it's because something else has happened and their mind has been, cho has been changed. So here, for example, you can see 40% actually chose a different brand as their final preference. So of that bunch of people who came in with a existing brand as a preference, 40% had their minds changed through that search and through that research process. Those original preferences have lost these consumers as customers, and they've had their minds turned, their, their perceptions changed by what they did in that research process. So what did they actually do? So what did they search for? I say we can capture every site they go to, we can capture the research that they conduct, we can capture their search terms that they use and what works and what doesn't. What do they click on? What do they convert on? So what do they search for? Um, across those different products, funnily enough, and it won't be any surprise that the brand itself or the, the product itself is usually the, the top, so mortgages, current account loans, credit cards as a term. We then get uh, usually one brand particularly come in as a search term. So we've got nationwide for mortgages, both Santander and Halifax, in fact, for current accounts, obviously nationwide for loans, Barclay card for credit cards. So there's one brand that, that stands out often uh, as a search term. But then also very strongly uh, coming out here in at least a couple of them is comparisons, advice aggregators, so money saving expert, money supermarket, credit card comparison. So people are not only gravitating to the brands themselves, but they're also very much looking for some support and help and comparison of what's out there in the market. And that's very clear when you look at the top sites visited from search. On the left hand side you've got the phrases they use, on the right hand side you've got where they went as a result of all that searching. In terms of the mortgages, researchers, money supermarket was the most popular, followed by money, money saving expert. Again, money supermarket, money supermarket, money supermarket. The key site that people go to as a result of search in these markets. You've also then got money saving ex expert and money coming in there as well. A couple of brands uh, also coming out there. The brands are, one or two are, are fairly strongly represented both in the search phrases and in visited. So again, you've got Nationwide, Santander, uh, Barclay card coming up there across both the search and the visits, but an awful lot of other brands not being represented either in search or in visits at all. And there's very much uh, obviously a story here about capitalizing on uh, appetite for comparison, not only working with the brands that are attracting uh, site uh, traffic to their comparison sites, but also thinking about what can be done on your own site to help consumers make that comparison help them take away your
products that you easily compare later rather than having to scribble down a couple of pieces of detail and share them later, particularly with things like mortgages that are perhaps a joint decision. Don't make people write things down on a scrappy piece of paper. Help them email details to themselves. Print them out nice and neatly with uh, some of your key messaging around them because people really do want to be able to do that, that comparison. And while they're starting off with the product name as a search term, they are consistently being driven towards the comparison site. And it's really interesting when you look at the influence of the different journeys on how preferences change. So here we have the results of the change from initial preference to final preference. We saw in a moment ago I mentioned that 40% of consumers, for example, in the mortgage market changed their preference. They changed from initial preference to final preference. So who are the winners and who are the losers within those changes? Who is gaining consumers and who is losing? On aggregate, across those finance products, I think it's clearly clear you can see here that Santander and Nationwide are the winners in that process. Santander particularly gone from 9% initial preference to 15% initial prefer uh, final preference on average across those four products. And again, Nationwide uh, going up a few percentage points as well, and everybody else fairly, fairly low. So the real winner here, particularly nationwide, for, uh, Santander followed by, by Nationwide, in terms of managing to change people's minds, capturing consumers who either had an initial preference or perhaps didn't have any preference at all. Not, not all everybody did. Around a third of the market comes in going, well, I'd probably just choose the one that had the best rate. So Santander, above all the other brands, being successful in capturing uh, people and increasing their initial preference. So who are they stealing, bra stealing um, people from? So whose minds are they changing? So for example, his credit cards particularly. We, the previous slide was aggregated over those financial services products, and now we're looking at uh, credit cards particularly. So the initial preference of those who preferred Santander at the end, who are, who are they? What was the initial preference? Is it all Santander consumers being taken across, or are they stealing from other brands? And you can see quite clearly here that actually Santander are very successful in changing people's minds who went in with another brand in mind. So around uh, pardon, um, just less than a quarter, so around 20% of the consumers who finally preferred Santander uh, preferred them at the beginning. Um, but actually, the majority of people who preferred them then have been stolen, essentially, from another brand. So a big chunk from Barclay Card. Um, another chunk from Capital One, another chunk from MBNA, and then from uh, other brands in the market. Around a quarter of them didn't have a uh, preference at all, so they've also Santander's also been successful at uh, persuading them that they are uh, they should choose them at the end. But actually, over half of those consumers have been stolen from another brand. So something Santander is doing in the process of search results, uh, really real good call outs in the search results, landing pages. Uh, convincing consumers that they've got a product that suits their needs, comparison product pages, they're really managing to convince consumers that they should change their initial preference and swap to them instead. On the flip side, look at the initial preference of those who preferred Barclays in the end. So this is a group of consumers who finally chose Barclays, and where did they come from? Actually, around a third of them, or over a third of them, preferred Barclays to start with. So that's good in one sense because it means they haven't had their mind changed, but it also means Barclays are very dependent on those consumers being loyal. And if anything happens to break that loyalty, but you've got a third of your market there already in danger. You've also got then just over a third who came from having no preference. And again, that's, that's good in one sense because it means Barclays cards and Barclays are managing to convince them they have a product that suits their needs. But actually, that look at that little wedge that's left, which is only about a quarter altogether. Those are the people whose Barclays has managed to change their minds. And actually, you can see quite clearly that uh, Barclays is considerably less successful at getting people to change their minds than Santander are. Santander are doing something very effective in this particular market, not only to uh, change people's minds, but also to uh, retain their existing customers as well. So Barclays doing well, in some cases, in some ways, you could, in some perspectives, but also leaving themselves 
open to something happening to the brand, the loyalty, but also doing very poorly in terms of people uh, getting people to actually change their minds in the process. And what's going on there? Why are people choosing the brands that they're choosing at this point? Well, that obviously changes very strongly depending on the brand you're looking at. And again, when we look at Santander, Santander versus Barclays, Santander are winning because they had the best accounts and offers for my needs. Something can see about Santander they are doing in their search results, but also on the landing page is, is persuading people very quickly and clearly that they have a product that suits their needs. Barclays less so. Barclays are trading on. Uh, I trust this company. I've used them before. More so. And that comes out from the previous slide as well, as I say, with their, their dependence on uh, their existing customers. So they're trusted and they are, are got some, some quite loyal companies quite loyal consumers, but actually outside of that loyal customer base, they seem to be struggling to expand outside of, of that, whereas Santander are the opposite. Santander are finding new customers by having products that are suitable for their needs um, that consumers can find quickly. And also coming into that is really strong, as I say, this, this influence for the, the comparison sites. So, this is just very quickly looking at the choices made by those who did use a comparison site versus those who didn't. And again, you can very, very strongly see here the positive influence that looking at a comparison site has on Santander. It also actually has on Tesco's here um, in this particular market as well. Um, we're looking at uh, credit cards here, obviously. So um, it's very clear that for some brands, that comparison site really doesn't have any, any use at all. So for Barclays, it makes no difference. But for Tesco and Santander, getting a good presence and getting the, the, the text right and getting the, the performance right on the comparison sites is actually very strong. So the comparison site uh, information is playing a big part in who chooses uh, your credit card. It's much more likely to produce Santander and some actually um, others brands benefit from that too. Um, so what does this mean? sort of very quickly before we go into the DSE, it means that uh, a lot of consumers are not visiting their initial, initial preference, initial preferred brand. Um, a lot of consumers are switching their loyalty from the initial preferred brand to another. So people like Santander, for example, doing very, very well in terms of capturing uh, those waverers. So how can you as a brand uh, capture and, and ensure that they don't get lost to another brand? And this is about things like dynamic retargeting, um, remarketing them, displaying targeted relevant content as they visit other websites to encourage them to, say, to, to keep remembering you as a brand, saying, actually, no, we are the right ones that can meet your needs. We have products that really suit their needs. Maximum relevance is about, uh, it's really about this slide, it's about maximum relevance. We saw people choosing Santander because it had a product that suited their needs specific, specifically. It's about understanding that consumers think they have individual and unique needs, even though we don't, that <laughs> the need you have is probably shared by a lot of other people, but consumers like to think that their, their needs are individual and unique and you need to understand them as a customer, particularly in financial services. So what can you do to understand what that need is? Is it around their life stage, how old they are? Is it around, can you figure out what it is through their uh, pages they've visited on your site before now? Can you remarket? Um, were you in on this page? Would you like to go back uh, and see uh, the credit card you were looking at previously? Is it the website they visited before? What kind of information were they getting before they, they came here? So it's about thinking about how can you really make that messaging as targeted as possible. So that's really looking at the DME. How do they make the choices that they make? Um, so let's think about what they do when they actually come to the website themselves, when they land on the Santander website or they land on the HSBC website, what are they doing and how do uh, the sites compare in uh, their ability to help consumers do their research and do their application. So most people in most markets want to complete and research, research an application online. 36% uh, in the mortgage market want to, obviously it's a slightly different process, people are prepared to go in, they know they probably need to have a conversation with a branch. Uh, an interview, a financial interview to actually apply for the mortgage. But most people, certainly within other financial services markets, want to be able to do all this online. Um, they are obviously looking, obviously, for fees and charges, but the most important 
second thing here is suitability for my specific need, as I was saying a moment ago, it's absolutely vital. And if they have problems, around a fifth of them will just give up. Some will use help and FAQ, some will use phone, online chat, um, which, is, which is actually growing, growing rapidly, but they have very little tolerance for, for issues and problems. They know there are other providers in the market, and if they have an issue, they will just leave. And that's a bit of a problem, because uh, on average, our sites uh, across these markets are not doing particularly well in meeting consumers' needs across the Consider and Act phases. The DSC breaks those Consider and Act phases down again into four steps for the Consider phase and two for the Act phase. So consider expectations, does it meet needs? Can I find what you've got? Introducing options, can I compare and understand whether it suits my needs in terms of evaluating options? And then why choose you? Then channel selection, do I do it online, do it offline? Why would I do each of these? And then through the application form. So you can see there are generally industry pain points and industry good points. So cards and accounts tend to start and end the journey pretty well. Uh, the problem uh, as come, comes really in those middle pieces. Uh, the final stage before starting to apply. Uh, why would I choose you? How Do you actually really have a product that suits my needs? I can see your range of products, but now as a consumer, I can't figure out whether it actually suits my needs specifically. And obviously then, in some cases, I can't actually go through and uh, finish the, the application. So let's look just quickly at a couple of those steps that evaluating options and facilitating decision pieces, those poor uh, scores in the middle there. And again, they break down further into to more elements, into tasks that we ask consumers to do, and obviously data from the best practice audit. Um, so most tend to provide OK comparison options. They generally, as industries, are very poor at helping consumers match a product to a need. Can they really find uh, a specific product that suits a specific need? But also then, brands tend to be pretty bad at helping consumers do this external comparison I was talking about a minute ago. Why do they choose you to yell about how great you are? Brands just don't do that uh, particularly well. So as I say, consumers finding it very hard to uh, match, find a product that matches their specific needs. And again, this is one we're looking particularly at mortgages. All of this data is replicated across all of the industries that we've seen so far. Um, and as I say, as a client, you have access to this in the portal. So this is the kind of thing client would see, uh, a graph of this particular stage in the process compared uh, their brand against the, the other brands that we've done. So say within mortgages, there's uh, seven key brands evaluated there. And generally speaking, as I say, these brands make it quite hard for consumers to find a product that suits their needs. So for example, with an RBS, we ask consumers to go and find a specific mortgage, um, low APR rate, the kind of thing that consumers would be would be looking to do when they did this journey. They're a first time buyer, they want a first time a fixed rate with a low APR. So not just to find the list of products, they're finding one that suits my specific needs. Most people are actually able to go to the first piece, so they find the, the home time buy first time buyers, but actually when they got further into the process, they find it very hard to find a specific product. And you can see why when you look at uh, the, the page of results that you get. Um, firstly, in some a lot of cases, you don't get any data at all, any research or any product at all when you put in specific data. Um, and there's then no help of, OK, uh, this might be because you've got a, lo a loan to value might be too high, or it might be because uh, you haven't given us enough information about X, Y, Z. If you get this as a consumer, your reaction is, okay, that's, then you don't have anything to suit my needs, I'm going to go somewhere else. It's a sort of end of journey, even though there might be a product there that the tool's not very helpful in telling you what to do next. If you do manage to get a list of mortgages, essentially that's what you've got. You've got a list of mortgages. You've got maybe 20 or 30 here. You can order them and in, in find products in that way, but it's just a very off-putting list of, of products. Um, there's no real help here for helps consumers to understand what might suit their needs better than others. It really is just a list of products that they are left as a consumer figuring out, well, what's important to me? I don't know. Is this important? Is that important? Um, is the product fee important? Is, is it not? So there's a lot of products here, but as a consumer, um, and say our consumers and our, our research really struggle to then get into the depth of this data and figure out what might suit their needs specifically, and they're going backwards and forwards between product pages, and the most of them failed the task. 
HSBC consumers are actually more likely to meet uh, this, to, to match this task. Not all of them, 65%, so we're still getting a third who struggles here, but actually more successful here in terms of being able to usefully use uh, a search tool to find products. Um, they, they found the search tool quite easily. Their, the labels are clearer. Um, the search can be amended in more ways, so we can narrow down much more specifically here in terms of what is my consumer's needs. Do I want to be able to do overpayments? Do I want to max loan to value? So rather than left being given 30 or 40 different products I have to search through or order, I can actually do that filtering at the top. It's much quicker and easier for consumers to do that filtering. So it's in the nature of the product that you get generally a list. Uh, with a lot of detail in it, but there are ways certainly of helping consumers filter that list that makes it much more likely that they're likely to come away thinking, yeah, there's a product here that, that will probably suit my needs, so I should take this further, I should talk to HSBC, I should go and make an appointment to, to talk to them about my mortgage. And then the other piece here we saw there was people doing very badly in Why Choose You. Uh, comparison. This is actually Ubank. This is comparison from the uh, an example from Australia. So say we work across multiple markets, and sometimes the best example of a a, a problem, uh, the best example is actually outside of your particular industry, outside of your particular territory. It's best to look um, at a at an example in a different territory. So say this is a, a really good example outside of the UK market into Australia of Ubank, backed by uh, NAB, backed by NAB. So there's uh, conviction about the trust of who Ubank are, even if you don't know who knew Ubank are, you probably know who um, NAB are. Awards, really good there. Uh, external validation of why we're great. Money Magazine's cheapest home loan. Um, why would you choose us very specifically? Uh, and it's not just about interest rates, it's about the other features of it, factors, cost um, in terms of fees. A nice competitive comparison calculator, so again, very explicitly, not just what we've got, but how this compares with what you could get in the market, um, and a comparison uh, of rates table. So very explicitly saying, okay, this is why we're great, it isn't just us saying we're great, um, we're backed by a really good brand that you know, we have some lots of external validation of other brands, of other uh, uh, sort of external uh, magazines or awards saying that uh, we're trustworthy and that you can, can can go with us. Here's some explicit reasons why you would choose us, and it's not say nebulous reasons. These are actually very explicit, cost-based, needs-based reasons, and this is how we compare to some of the other people you might be thinking about. So very clear, as well as customer reviews, ratings, reviews. So l really go beyond the the simple list of why choose us, and lots of implicit and explicit content. Um, and as I say, that's really something that a lot of these brands do do badly at um, in terms of ex external comparison. We saw here in the UK market in loans, um, very low scores here, and why choose us? So this tends to be something that a lot of the brands in the UK do very badly at, I have to say. We look at all the markets we, we look at. And it's really, really important. And just because you are a big brand in the market, people know you, that doesn't necessarily mean that they trust you and that they think you are the best for their needs in this specific market. So absolutely vital that you build that. Uh, so here's the loans market, for example. Why do consumers prefer the brand they preferred in loans? 50% I trust them, 40% I've used them before. Obviously, rate options, interest rates, very important. Uh, absolutely very important, too. We're not displaying. Uh, putting that down at all, but absolutely at the core of why I choose this particular brand, it's because they trust them. So you have to get that across on your website, you have to do things like the Ubank are doing in terms of we're backed by a brand, if it's an unknown brand, or we're um, known, uh, we have, um, in fact, let's just put that up again, uh, reasons to choose Ubank, Ubank, so competitive comparisons, trust, awards, competitive comparison calculated. So this is something, as I say, that a lot of brands don't do very well at all. I think sometimes perhaps they feel that it's unnecessary. Sometimes they feel that the product essentially stands uh, alone, but absolutely not when consumers are doing this comparison. They need this constant drip feed of value, essentially, both implicit and, as I say, explicit. Why would you choose us? Why would you keep us top of mind when you're thinking about this with a partner later, for example, for products that are, uh, say, 
something that, that they might choose uh, in collaboration with somebody else. So it's not just about, I have a product to suit my needs, that's absolutely vital, which we've just seen. And again, brands don't do very well. It's also about then taking that next step and saying, okay, you found a product that suits your needs, great, but we're not just going to sit back and assume that means you're going to choose us. We're going to take that next step and say, well, let's give you some really good reasons why you would carry on and choose us. So as you can see, the DME and the DSC combine very effectively here to give us uh, essentially some practical opportunities in terms of looking at why consumers choose the brands they choose and then how you as a website can support that choice um, and as our sites at the moment are doing, doing it fairly poorly across most of the financial services markets that, that we look at. So it's about thinking about keeping yourself top of mind, things like sponsored listings and remarketing because a lot of consumers are changing their minds in the process. That loyalty at the beginning is not translating uh, in a lot of the cases to, to loyalty at the end. Brands like Santander are stealing customers from other brands that don't do this effectively. Thinking about a variety of content and tools to help consumers find the most suitable product. And it's not just tools, but it's also about language. So they come away thinking, I've got the product that really suits my needs. So really think about what those needs are. Tailor the journeys uh, to, to make sure they get presented with the most relevant content. Scannable, consistent product pages. We saw that long list of markets uh, of mortgages. That's just not useful to a consumer who might be a bit daunted by the process anyway. Um, and then we saw with the U-Bank a variety of approaches to reinforce why consumers would absolutely choose your brand in the end. So that's a whistle-stop tour. It really has been a whistle-stop tour through some of the UK's financial services research in the digital marketing effectiveness and digital sales effectiveness strands of research that we conduct in the UK on a regular basis. A very, very short glimpse into the depth and breadth of that, that research. As I said earlier, as clients, you get a full access to the portal, which has all of this data in both the DME and the DSE, detailed analysis. Uh, of your own brand each step through both of those products, but also uh, that it's a benchmark. So you're seeing the results for the other brands in your benchmark. So you can truly compare uh, your success uh, and your uh, statistics at each stage. Obviously, you get interaction with, with us as uh, advisors as well, into activation workshops and our advisory hours. Usually, in the DSC runs on a twice yearly basis. Uh, and the DME will run uh, often on a monthly basis because that's obviously capturing a snapshot of how marketing is uh, achieving at a particular point and that changes considerably, changes fast over the years. So we run that on a more frequent basis. It's also worth mentioning that the research can also, is also run across mobile devices. Um, this is actually uh, Australian research um, that we've just completed on mobile sites. Uh, in personal loans and the credit card financial services market. So there's an awful lot of data here. Uh, I say I've given you a whistle-stop tour of the last 45 minutes through some of the key insights, hopefully, from the DME and the DSC. I hope it's been interesting. If you have any questions or would like to talk to us in more depth, please do reach out to us. I'm uh, rebecca.jennings at globalreviews.com. Um, or that's rebecca.jennings at globalreviews.com. Um, if you would like any more information and uh, it just suffices me to say thank you very much for uh, letting me take 45 minutes of your time today and I hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much.